Hello and welcome back to the beginners JavaScript course for absolute beginners. In this tutorial, we discuss comments. Now this is part three currently of this course. If you go into the playlist from the main site, you'll find the rest of the tutorials right here in this playlist and you can start from the very beginning. There's obviously a lot more to come, but let's get started. There is a nice quote from a famed MIT professor, Hal Alberson, who said, programs must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to execute. And here we're just emphasizing the fact that you need to try and make your code as readable as possible, because the likelihood is that you're not the only person who's gonna be reading that code. There are gonna be many more developers reading that code um, maybe it's an open source piece of program, in which case lots more people would will be reading it. If you're working within a business, maybe there's different levels um, of developers in that business and others will need to expand and extend that program. Later on, maybe the program is expanded in a certain way. So making your program as readable as possible is really important and comments can help aid that process. The reality here with this tutorial is it's going to take us a couple of seconds to learn how to write comments in JavaScript. The real skill here is understanding when, where and why to write comments. And that's a process that might take some considerable time. Now, considering in, considering in this tutorial series, we haven't even started writing any code. I think this tutorial is just setting the path for us to review as we go deeper into this tutorial series. So therefore, the first part of this tutorial, we'll quickly go through how to make comments with JavaScript. And then I'll just give you some narration and chat a little bit about when, where and why and give you some initial pointers to start writing comments. So there are two flavors or types of comments that you'll typically see in JavaScript code, single line and multi line. To build a single line comment with JavaScript, so we have the double forward slash, and then we can build a comment. So notice that Visual Studio Code at least grays out the comment, and that just indicates that it is a comment. So it's important to understand that comments aren't going to affect the performance of your application. And also none of the comments will get um, evaluated. So the interpreter doesn't evaluate any of the comments at all. So they're only read by humans. To create a multi-line comment, and just to, just to clarify that, you can see that we put some text underneath this line. So this single line comment will only last the, the line. So if we put some text above or below, you can see that, that then this text here will get evaluated. So let's go ahead and do the multi-line. So we have the, we start off with the forward slash and asterisk, and then we end with asterisk and the forward slash and then anything in between that on any line you can see that that's all going to be or in this case a multi-line comment now typically we add the star to the front or each line you probably see this type of format being utilized on multi-line comments and that's all really there is to it creating comments in javascript Similar, similar to like other programming languages, maybe you're used to or utilized. Um, you'll find eventually um, a lot of these styles are utilized on multiple languages. So now we understand how to create comments. Let's explore a little bit more about when, where, and why. So let's talk about where. So typically you're going to see comments used before code, and that's kind of logical. You can read the comments and it's associated to the, the code below. You may also see inline comments next to statements. Just as an example, not for you to kind of start to think about what the code is doing here, uh, just an example of comments. So here, for example, we have this statement and you can see we have a single line comment next to the statement and that gives us some in interesting information. So here we have what is a, a variable and let result equals get all components. So we can try and do our best to name appropriately to give some context to the person reading, but all components of what exactly? 
So here, for example, this is a comment that helps a reader understand what exactly is being collected or this function is associated to. In this case, it retrieves all UI components. So that's what the components is referring to here. So notice here that the comment isn't trying to explain what the code is doing. So the, the comment it doesn't suggest that we're creating a variable. It's clear to the reader that a variable is being created and there is a function here. At least once we understand what functions and variables are, you will do. So there's no need to actually comment on what the code, uh, to comment on the code, um, but we're trying to explain what it's for or the purpose of the code. That's important. So a second example here, we can utilize comments for metadata. So additional information, which may be utilized um, by third party programs or potentially can be utilized in other ways to aid the program in some way. So here we have an example of uh, some metadata, so the name and the version of this particular program. And you can see that this is using a multi-line comment. So here, for example, we have a function which is going to perform a set of actions maybe. So here the comment, a multi-line comment, is identifying, or in this case, it's telling why this uh, function may be needed. Or potentially, it's going to describe, like here, it's going to describe what is the outcome of this function. So it may be that comments also describe what is the, like I said, what is the outcome of this function? So um, what is the output from this function? So this function, we pass in something and then it performs an action and then it might return something. So we might describe what the expected um, result might be. Now we also might describe what data should go in the function and provide an example of how the data will then return. So we understand what data will go in and what will be the expected output. So we can give some additional information in that way here in this multi-line comment. And like I said, this is kind of really advanced uh, at this point and is something that we will explore later on in this series. Something you might start using comments for straight away is debugging. So if you think about a program, it might be a logical sequence of actions. So if you're trying to debug something, it might be that you decide to comment out a piece of code to identify where the problem is. So here I'm using a Mac command and forward slash, and you can see that here I can actually comment and uh, remove the comment uh, utilizing command button and the forward slash button. And it'd be similar to Windows. If you go over to the top menu, and you then go to edit. Um, you can toggle the line comments. So have a look on your machine, whether you're using Windows, Mac or Linux, it will show the, um, the short key for that. So that's always useful to know how to comment quickly uh, by selecting the code and pressing the hotkeys. So there is much to read about comments and there's a lot of discussion potentially um, you will read through if you start looking into comments because there is a significant group of developers that advocate against writing comments or code comments at all. So you can see that there's some gray area here in, for example, um, how much comments you should write, um, when is too much, too much. Uh, so there's there's a lot of questions here potentially to try and tackle and a lot of those questions might be answered based upon where you work for example because there might be guidelines in terms of how many comments or whether you should write comments or not so there's nothing to start panicking about or thinking about in too much depth depth at this stage but what's important to maybe understand is that comments can take a long time to write, particularly if you're writing quite a lot of them. And of course, if you start writing lots of comments, your code might change quite rapidly. So therefore your comments might need to change and it becomes then hard to maintain those comments. So there's definitely a balance here to strike between the amount of comments that you write. So in addition to that, it says it adds cognitive load. Now remember from the start, we mentioned this idea that the code is primarily focused potentially on readability. Now, having too many comments, particularly in your code, it makes it harder for them to actually read through the code potentially. 
So that adds what I'm suggesting here, concative load, so it makes it harder for you to read and follow the code when there's comments potentially or too many comments on the page um, preventing you from reading the code uh, effectively or quickly. So let's finish up on some rules. So rule number one, when you're making comments, make sure that your comments aren't explaining what the code does, but try and focus and explain why or what the purpose of the code is for. So the idea here is that, and I can guarantee this will happen to you, you're developing a piece of code, you kind of really engross yourself into this piece of code, you fully understand what's going on, and then you go away for a week, you come back, and you've got absolutely no idea how this thing works. And that's where comments can come in handy, because they're going to explain why or the purpose of that code. Now, you're not going to forget what co the code does. You're not, you're not going to forget what a function is, or you're not going to forget what a variable is. You'll be able to read that and understand what those are, of course. But you aren't necessarily going to be able to understand um, what the function is doing um, or the purpose of that particular code. And that's what you need to potentially understand coming back to code after a while of not reading the code. Having said that, as new developers, it may be beneficial for you to start making comments um, about particular code, explaining what the code does, because we're new to development. So you would imagine that you would have forgotten maybe um, what the piece of code is actually doing. So writing it down in a comment might be useful for you. So don't let this put you off if you are developing code for yourself. And th these are really rules uh, thinking about in, in the long term as you start developing with multiple developers and sharing your code and so on. This is where these rules really come into play. And I thought it might be useful at this point to really just put that grounding in place to think about the, the long term. Because here we do have a problem. Uh, for example, new developers, um, or if you're going through education, typically you might get into the habit of writing comments uh, or far too much of them where you're explaining the code. Because essentially in education, you are probably picking up marks for explaining the code, being able to explain exactly what you're doing. So the focus of that of comments in that context is going to be slightly different. So this just really points out that um, f shift from education, say, into the, the development world. So the second rule, let's not forget that compilers, interpreters, CPUs, computers, they ignore comments and they don't read your comments. Remember, it's humans reading your comments. So try and make sure that your comments aren't confusing uh, and not conf creating more confusion. So try and make sure that it's in clear, understandable language. Um, try not maybe to utilize too many uh, technical words. Maybe that's a, uh, something that you can try and avoid. Uh, clear, simple, understandable comments. Ultimately, you should find that programs are harder to understand. Comments should help us make sense of them. So the last rule here really isn't a rule, but just something to think about. As a new developer, maybe you're starting to take code from other places, other sources. So maybe you want to write some comments that provide links to the original source. So referencing the source, of course, and maybe you might include some additional information. What was the problem being solved, the author of the code, and why the solution is recommended. For those who are looking for a little bit of extra reading or information, JS Docs, JS Docs sorry, might be an interesting read for you to have a little look at. So JS Docs is a markup language that we can utilize within comments or annotate comments, um, which can then be utilized to create documentation, for example. So take, for example, uh, building what, is, what we can describe as an API system. The idea here is that you build your API, you build some, for example, endpoints, and this is all kind of back end program with the idea then of people who develop for the front end can then take your back end uh, and look at the documentation and then be able to build the front end to interact with the back end. So documentation is really key here. So JS Docs can kind of provide 
tools uh, to build these automated documentation, utilizing, utilizing this markup language to annotate uh, comments. There were some examples in the comments I showed you earlier, for example, this at author here. So this is an example of syntax that can then be captured by another program uh, to then generate some sort of documentation. It's really easy to find. Just type in JS Docs into Google, go to the homepage and get started with JS Docs 3. So reading around comments, if you wanted to read a little bit deeper, there are many, many sources. There are many, many rules that you can follow. The key here is really that when you're writing comments to think about keeping it nice, clear and simple and explain the why or the purpose rather than trying to explain um, the code. So if you got to the end, thank you very much for listening. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this and more to come, of course, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.